Now, if you are a big film buff, you've surely seen thousands of movies in your lifetime, enough that you can't be blamed for forgetting more specific details about films than most. But sometimes, there's something a little weirder going on in a collective sense, where viewers en masse have the same false memories of a movie scene. We're of course getting into Mandela Effect territory here, but in slightly more trivial terms, it applies to movies too, with many detailing unnerving specific memories of film scenes that are in in fact, totally inaccurate. So let's dive in. I'm Adam, this is What Culture, and here are 10 movie scenes you remember totally wrong. Number 10. The lawyer wasn't going to the bathroom when he got eaten, Jurassic Park. It's practically impossible to forget the scene from Jurassic Park where lawyer Donald Gennaro is eaten by the rampaging T-Rex. Yet for many, they remember Donald being devoured by the dino while taking an impromptu number two with his trousers around his ankles. Yet if you revisit the scene, this isn't the case at all but one can at least appreciate where the confusion comes from. For starters, Donald does flee from the T-Rex by running into a portable bathroom nearby, and upon seeing Ian Malcolm comically quips, when you gotta go, you gotta go. For those who first saw Jurassic Park as kids, these two impressionable factors, combined with Donald wearing shorts and the understandable fight or flight terror of the situation, might explain why so many have misremembered him being mid-crap when he was picked up and swallowed by the dinosaur. In reality, he's just hiding in terror rather than actually attempting an emergency bowel evacuation, as believable as that might be were he still not wearing his shorts. Number 9. Taika Waititi plays Thomas Kalmaku, not Richard Ayoade, Green Lantern. None of us can be held to account too much for our false memories of Green Lantern, considering it's probably a movie most people have only watched once, or maybe twice at a stretch. Nevertheless, hands up if you thought that Richard Ayoade played the supporting comic relief role in the film as Hal Jordan's pal Thomas Kalmaku. Quite the show of hands. But for the few who have ever bothered to check, Thomas is actually played by another on-the-rise comedian of this period, the great Taika Waititi. Now in the defense of anyone who maintains that it was indeed Ayoade in the movie, Waititi is sporting a curly head of hair while wearing a pair of specs, ensuring he looks decisive decidedly more like the IT crowd funny man than himself. The fact that he's even wearing a check shirt, similar to those worn by Ayoade's IT crowd character Moss, makes the mistake even easier to appreciate. Hilariously, YTT probably didn't mind too much if you forget that he was in the movie, given that he semi-jokingly denied he was even in it while on the press tour for Free Guy with Reynolds. Number 8. Morpheus never says, what have I told you, The Matrix. What if I told you that Morpheus never actually says, what have I told you, in The Matrix? Mind blown. For many millions of people, the first image they conjure when they think of the Matrix is that iconic shot of Morpheus staring at Neo who is reflected in his badass sunglasses. We all know it's from the sequence where Morpheus onboards Neo with a breakdown of what the Matrix is, yet the wildly disseminated one-liner actually isn't spoken in any of the Matrix movies. Rather, this is a meme template which was created in 2012 and quickly went viral, typically being used to sarcastically illustrate a supposedly mind-blown truth to anyone who reads it. The meme has remained popular for more than a decade, enough that it's effectively changed people's mental perception of the corresponding scene from the movie. It certainly sounds perfectly in step with Morpheus's mode of speech throughout the Matrix movies, but no, he never says it to anyone, not even once. Number 7. Dolly doesn't have braces, Moonraker. Bond film Moonraker rather amusingly introduced a love interest for villain Jaws, a petite, glasses-wearing, pigtail-haired woman credited simply as Dolly. Ask the average Bond fan what Dolly looks like, and in addition to mentioning the above characteristics, there's a fair chance they'll mention that she has braces on her teeth. And let's be honest, you probably thought it too, didn't you? But no. 
Dolly doesn't have braces at all. Her pearly whites are plainly visible without any metal dental work getting in the way. As for why there's a collective delusion about this, for one, Jaws himself has metal grills, and it's not a huge leap to believe that the woman of his dreams might also have a contraption in her mouth. And secondly, don't braces just seem like they suit this cute, mousy woman so perfectly? And so, people's brains just made a logical connection even if it isn't in fact featured in the film itself. Hilariously, a VFX artist went through the trouble of digitally superimposing braces on Dolly's teeth, quite brilliantly even, just to give a full impression of what people are imagining. Oddly, the YouTube comments are largely filled with people insisting Dolly absolutely had braces in earlier versions of the film. Number 6. Simba and Nala only have one cub at the end, The Lion King There's a solid chance you've seen the original animated version of The Lion King say a few dozen times over the last 30 years. And yet, can you say with absolute confidence how many cubs Simba and Nala have at the end? There are entire Reddit threads of people convinced that there were two cubs in the final scene, and upon being challenged by this, they defiantly insist that Disney must have changed the scene in more recent home releases. A total logical act on the part of the Mouse House, of course. But this simply isn't the case. Simba and Nala have just one cub in the final scene, and that's always been the case. Conspiracy nuts be damned. Given that the sequel, The Lion King 2 Simba's Pride, features only Simba and Nala's daughter Kiara, it wouldn't make any sense at all for there to have been two cubs. It's time to let this one go, guys. Number 5. Hansen Never Says Take My Strong Hand, Scary Movie 2 Scary Movie 2 isn't a good movie, but it's a funny one, and surely its single most memorable character is Hansen, the caretaker of the haunted mansion known as Hell House. Hansen's defining physical characteristic is his deformed hand, and fans will surely recall the infamous scene where Dwight is left hanging from a window, and Hansen attempts to help him by offering his aforementioned hand. Dwight, repulsed by the deformity, soundly refuses and instead falls two stories to the ground. It's widely recalled that Hansen says to Dwight, take my strong hand, during the scene, but if you re-watch it, you'll find that this isn't the case. No matter that take my strong hand is perhaps the most quoted part of the scene and even the entire movie. Where did it come from then? People are confusing it with a scene earlier in the film where Hansen helps Cindy carry her luggage into heaven. Hell House, and mentions that he'd better use his strong hand, referring to his deformed appendage. Fans have fused the two scenes together in their minds to create the iconic moment that actually never happened. At least not quite how they remember it. Number 4. A player doesn't fall out of their pod, The Hunger Games. Now here's a truly bizarre example which has a most unexpected explanation. There are many folks online who swear blind that the original Hunger Games movie features a scene where one of the contestants is brutally blown up after falling off their podium before the Hunger Games countdown timer reaches zero. It's an oddly specific beat for so many people to remember out of thin air, with some even believing that the scene must have been cut for the home video release, given that there's no evidence of its existence. The reason for this? People have conflated The Hunger Games with its 2013 parody movie equivalent, The Starving Games. The film, produced by famously dire parody filmmakers Jason Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer, indeed features a scene where two characters accidentally fall off their podiums early and are consequently exploded in a giant fireball. That so many couldn't mentally distinguish this low-budget parody from the slickly cinematic real Hunger Games film is a bit worse worrying, honestly. Number 3. C-3PO has a silver right leg, not gold, Star Wars A New Hope. Here's one that'll have you questioning your very sanity. Now what colour is Star Wars C-3PO? That's correct, gold. And he's entirely gold, right? Well, nope. Throughout the original trilogy, 3PO's right leg is actually painted silver below the knee, yet due to both its reflective qualities, causing it to reflect the gold from the other leg, the low number of camera shots showing C-3PO's full body, it's easily missed. 
Yet even when it was pointed out by fans, many maintained that C-3PO was originally fully gold, and it must have been an after-the-fact change by George Lucas in more recent years. But Anthony Daniels himself confirmed that the leg was indeed painted silver from the jump. You shouldn't feel bad about getting this one wrong though, given that even the Star Wars merchandising team failed to get it right, as the original C-3PO action figure hilariously has two gold legs. Number 2. Tom Cruise doesn't wear sunglasses while dancing, risky business. People will swear on their mother's life that, during the iconic dance scene from Risky Business where Joel dances around his living room in his pants to Bob Seger's all-time rock and roll, he's wearing sunglasses. But go back and check the scene, it's just not true. Tom Cruise's face is entirely unobscured for the entirety of the sequence we've surely all seen many times over the years. There are at least a few plausible reasons for people misremembering though. First and foremost, Joel does wear Ray-Ban sunglasses throughout much of the film, and is also memorably shown wearing them on the film's poster. And secondly, this scene has been widely parodied across various media over the last 40 years, and almost every single parody will feature the central character in question wearing sunglasses. Basically, these elements have conspired to dupe people into thinking Joel wore sunglasses during the dance through enforced cultural osmosis. Additionally, but somewhat less devastatingly, you might also remember Cruz as wearing a white shirt during the scene, as is the case in basically every parody of the scene, but in fact, it's a pink shirt. Number 1. Psy doesn't take sexual photos of Will and Maya, one hour photo. Mark Romanek's terrific psychological thriller one hour photo revolves around a lonely photo technician, Psy Parrish, who becomes obsessed with a family, the Yorkins, he spent years developing photos for. But Psy's idyllic window into their life is shattered when he discovers that the husband, Will, is having an affair, and so follows Will and his mistress Maya to their hotel hookup and breaks into their room with a knife. Some viewers appear to remember the scene playing out differently than it actually does, believing that Psy takes perverted photographs of the couple posed in suggestive positions, seemingly in an attempt to blackmail Will into stopping his cheating ways. Yes, Psy breaks into the room, but he only makes makes Will think he's taking pictures of them. Many seem to forget that the movie's ending reveals that Psy actually took photos of mundane objects in the hotel room, effectively blackmailing Will by making him think he's got irrefutable proof of his infidelity. It probably doesn't help that the movie's marketing focused almost exclusively on creepy images of Robin Williams playing against type, especially the nightmarish glimpse of his blood red eyes, enough to persuade your memory that he did indeed go the whole perverted hog. And there we have it folks, our list of movie scenes you remember totally wrong. But please do let us know, as always, down in the comments of any movie scenes that you remember incorrectly. And while you're down there in the comments, make sure you give us a like and a cheeky subscribe. If you want to follow me on socials, I am at Strawn87 on Twitter and on Instagram, you can come and say hello to me on there. Thank you for watching everyone, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and until next time, take care.